we, I, I think we do a really, really good job here of helping to educate uh, buyers, especially of what this market is like. Mm-hmm. And even though we set expectations really well on the front end that, you know, there's a strong chance that you're going to miss out on, on some homes here, right? Because of the amount of competition, people still find it really difficult to navigate through that and um squeaky doors man well, da- david goss one of our buyer just specialists just walked by the studio door and i'm going to bring him in to help answer this question yeah so what we're saying david is we do uh we do a really good job on the front end of explaining what this market is like to buyers to try and set appropriate expectations but it's still really difficult for buyers um to accept that we've missed out on multiple homes. I think what what's what's the biggest piece of advice that we can give people right let now? Let me I think you I think you added a key piece to clarify for David. What it the hard part is they understand it intellectually, mm-hmm. right? Like yeah, I get it. There's not very many houses, there's tons of buyers, there's low interest rates, blah 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 blah. It's been a while. Low inventory, high demand. We're there. Everyone knows that. Right. But getting it from your head into your heart or for, into reality of just accepting that that's actually okay. Well, especially when you've fallen in love with right. some houses on the so, planet. And we try and t- tell people, like, don't fall in love with it right. until with that. So, David, I, how are you explaining that to people? How are you helping people navigate that, knowing that it's not always perfect, but that is the reality that we're in? What what does that look like day to day for you with buyers? Well, it's tough. I, last night, uh, one of my clients said to me, how do you present the offers when we sign and, and make an offer? How do you present them? And I said, why? Well, I, I start way before we present it. I call the agent and try to get a hold of them. I email them, I text them and try to get a feel for, you know, what the property's maybe going to go for. Okay, let me take a quick time out yeah. there. Cause a lot of people don't recognize the actual value of that. It's like, right. whoop de do you call <laughs> an email? Really good idea, dude. The reality is in this market, a lot of times the agent that represents the seller will ignore a buyer agent, right? Correct. They're spoiled right now, right? Mm-hmm. So whether they're good or bad, they're going to get attention if the property is good. That doesn't mean they're going to get max value for it. Oftentimes they're leaving a lot of money on the table, but it's that crazy of a market. They might have three or four offers, even if they do a bad job. And yeah. if they do a decent job, they might have eight, 10, 12 or more. So what David is saying is, He's starting to develop a relationship with them where they know, okay, this David guy's legit. He's on the ball. He's going to be easy to work with. He's going to be easy to communicate with. He's already told me his clients got good financing, those kinds of things. Okay. So your client asked you last night, how do you do that? So you're explaining to them that you've already started some of that, even though you haven't written an offer yet. Right. Go ahead. What else? Yeah. I just told him, Hey, I start that before we even go look at houses. If I know there's, cause we're going to like one or two or three of these houses, we better get going and get to you know get in touch with the agent uh, and let them know that we're serious. We got a local lender; they're fully approved. All those things help, uh, you know, when, before it, I even send the offer. Yeah. Okay. So then you what you you know we're not going to get into the technicalities of it, yeah. but you draw up the agreement with all the appropriate documents and disclosures and all that kind of stuff, right? What do you what can you do right now that maybe other real estate agents can't do that helps your offer get seen? get noticed, get recognized, get presented, which they're obligated to do. But we know that in this market, maybe they're not always doing that, even though they're supposed to. What else can you do to make sure that 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 happens, to make sure your offer gets looked at? And it's, and you've heard, it's not always the highest offer wins. It's sometimes the way you write it and how it's complete and how you fill it out and how you uh, present it to the listing agent. There's yep. lots of ways, you know, and even these last few weeks I've presented the, the cruise, the five day, four night cruise has helped. Uh, I've won two offers with that. Okay. So. Time out. <laughs> For those that don't know what David is saying, our team here at the Todd Tremonti home selling team, that's what we do all week. Every week we do a radio show on the weekends to be an advocate and a guide and helpful and add value in your life. Even if you're not one of our clients, but all throughout the week, every week, our team at the Todd Tremonti Home Selling Team sells, you know, and, and it will probably sell 200 and something houses this year. So David will sell a big chunk of those. He only works with buyers. Now, in the last month or so, we are, as a company, giving our buyers a prepaid cruise so that the buyer can add that on top of their offer and present that to the seller 
so that the seller will be interested in their offer. It doesn't guarantee that they accept it, but I think it does guarantee that they look at it and yes. take it seriously, which otherwise they might not have done. Right. So tell me that again. Just in the last several weeks, you've had two offers that you feel were accepted because we were able to add that cruise on top of the Oh, offer. for sure. One agent called me right away and said, tell me about the cruise. That was the first thing she asked me. So not, she didn't ask about the no. offer itself or your client or their timeline. Right. She asked about her vacation. Right. And I know it wasn't <laughs> the highest offer. She let me know that you're competitive, but you're not the highest, but he's interested in the cruise. I was going to say, it's not even going to the agent. <laughs> right. It's going to the seller. Yeah. Right, right, right. Yeah, yeah. She was talking for her seller, correct? Yeah, I love it. And the reality is there's there's a lot of value in a five-day, yeah. four-night cruise for two, but it's also something different. Now, we're not going to give away every secret we've got in the book, but it sounds like the call, text, email thing is simple. It's not. Lots of agents don't take the time to do that. Obviously, it sounds like the cruise thing is a little bit of a gimmick, but it's not. David, you, you've been on the cruise. Producer Mason's been on those cruises. <laughs> I've been on those cruises. Ian's I haven't. Family members, but not Ian. But anyway, they're the real deal. So uh, time out. If you're thinking about buying a house right now and you would like to have that kind of power behind your offer, not only an incredible full-time, fully dedicated, gifted agent like David, but also the extra fuel of a prepaid vacation added onto your offer, then go to overunderagent.com right now. I mean, we, we could plug you in specifically with David, but we've got great other agents in Fort Worth and all over Dallas that can help you. Uh, that This is all they do all day long is only work with buyers to deliver world-class value. 